Welcome back everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. Depending on what time you're watching this video, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Hopefully you watch it more than once today. We're going to do another knot video today for that virtual guide series. Uh, I think the one we're going to do is the blood knot. So we're going to get that in a minute. But if you would, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, the little bell so it'll notify you anytime we throw a new video up. Also, check us out on Facebook. We got great content there. Sometimes we put stream reports up. Sometimes it's just pictures of beautiful scenery or fish. Also, Instagram kind of duplicates a little bit of Facebook, but every now and then we put something different on either one. And then obviously you're on YouTube right now, but feel free to go check us out anytime that you're on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the knot. Like I said, we are going to do the blood knot. I might have saved double surgeons a little earlier, but it's the blood knot if I, if I misspoke. Um, we did the double surgeons the last video, I think. So blood knot, what is the blood knot used for? Blood knot is used for attaching two lines together of equal diameter or very similar diameter. At diameter. Every now and then you can go a little bigger or smaller. It's kind of like attaching tippet to a liter in a way. But you don't want them to be drastic different sizes. So here I've just got some running line that's technically an old like nymphing line. It's covered with a, a PVC coating, but it is mono underneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach these. And this is the way I tie it. There's several ways to do this. There's also a blood knot tool um, that we've carried here in the shop in the past. Um, so if you want something like that, we can, uh, if we don't have it in stock, we're happy to order it for you. But the way this works is I'm going to pretend that I'm just attaching a piece of tippet to leader. So this is going to be my leader over on my left hand side, which would be your right hand side. And this is going to be my new piece of tippet on this side. So what you want to do is make sure you have plenty of line for this, just to give yourself enough to work with. And the key to this for me is I lock, a, lock the lines. I'm going to double them over here in a second, and I lock it between my two fingers, my ring finger and my middle finger on my left hand. So I overlap them, and I usually give myself about a good six inches to work with, because this is going to be the line that I'm really working. And I take this, and I lock it in right there, and that's how I hold it. What that does is when I start twisting this, this won't come untwisted. So then we're going to start working this. I'm going to go around it a few times here, usually about four to five times, and you want them to match. So however many you do on one side, you want to do it on the other. That one I did about four. Then you're going to grab it right here. This is going to create your loop that you're going to send your tag ends back through where these fingers are right here. Then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to wrap this. If I can count right, I believe that's four. Then you take this tag end and you're going to go back through that loop. And that's pretty much locked in there. I usually hold it with my right finger just to be safe. And that also keeps that loop open. And if you pull, it'll tighten everything up and you just slide your fingers down. I'll try to do this slow. And you come to your other tag in. You want to pass that through the opposite side. So this one went through away from me. Now I'm going to bring this one back to me. This is where I'm going to go off camera for a second. But as you can see, both of them are tied in there. They're all both through that loop. And I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to put these two in my mouth so I can tighten this down a little. And as you tighten it down, one side tightened down a little faster than the other side. But all I can do, I can pull the tag in and even that up. So you can see how that will even up a little bit. From this point, this is when you want to moisten. Once you kind of get the knot um, halfway seated, throw a little spit or chapstick or something on it. And then you're going to pull these down. And you'll see the knot start to shape. And this stuff doesn't slide as easy as mono or flora. So it's kind of a little jumpy, but there's the knot, nice and pretty. And the cool thing about this knot is you can trim these tags as close to the knot as possible. So a good pair of nippers right up beside it. Get both of them cleaned off here for you. So there it is. And if you run, if you tie this correctly and run your fingers down it, you won't even feel those tag ends. It'll be smooth. And actually, me and Shannon were talking about this earlier. If you throw some like UV resin over this and hit it with the, the UV light, if you're building leaders for like Euronymphing where part of your leader is outside of the rod and sometimes it's inside the rod, this will slide through that rod really nicely at the end so you don't get, if you hook a fish and it's a big fish, it won't take off and break your tippet. So you can make these really, really smooth. So these are great knots for building leaders. Um, and as you can see, you want the wraps to be pretty even on both sides, same count. And this is a super strong knot. It's usually about 80 to 85% break strength. So again, if you're using, you know, 10 pound test, uh, just as an example to make math easy, you know, this is probably about an eight pound knot. Um, so, you know, you can do the math if you're using three pound or something like that for more of a trout purpose. But that is the blood knot in a nutshell. Again, go like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
Uh, appreciate everybody listening, watching. Um, go check out the Tuckcast with a splash of bourbon. Also, our podcast. You can find that on all your uh, podcast channels. They actually call them something different. Podcatchers, I believe is what they're called. Uh, but go check that out. And we appreciate everybody watching. Y'all have a great day.